Stephen Jill here. Hello. Welcome to the House Academy Show, entertaining real estate investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from sunny Southern California. Today, Jill and I talk about the minimum profit for deal to make it worth your while. This is going to be fun. I I'm couldn't curious. agree more. We have our own minimum profit, and I'm curious what your minimum profit is. And you might change your minimum profit yeah. after you hear us talk about ours and the reasoning why. I actually have a sort of an interesting twist on this. Oh, good. It has to do with product type. Okay, let's save it. Yeah. We? Okay. Before we get into it, let's take a question posted on uh, posted by one of our members on the HouseAcademy.com online community. It's free. I was just in there yesterday too, by the way. So good communications. There's lots of good things like this question going on in there. Joe asks, I just started using DataTree. Does anyone know how to filter out the improved lots, lots with structures on them, by using a percent improved, like zero to one percent, like we do with RealQuest Pro? Can I explain? I'm gonna explain this real quick. Uh, you should explain what what the data is that we provide and all that. Right, stuff. a little bit. What? So yeah. And then so I'll, then I'll answer the question. Okay. Yes. So um, Land Academy members have RealQuest Pro, which is really the best for land. And this is one of the reasons why, because um, we can really focus in on rural vacant land without any improvements on it and, and know that's what we're searching for. Um, Title Pro 24-7, which actually both House Academy and Land Academy people have, uh, which is like Agent Pro 24-7 on steroids. If any of you have Agent Pro, trust me, <laughs> Title Pro is for title agents and it's better. And you are not jammed into three different pre-selected uh, things that you can download. You can sit and customize it to your heart's content. These tools, these three tools, uh -huh. are used by huge insurance companies, mm -hmm. Wall Street, uh, insurance adjusters, oil and gas companies, title agents, commercial real estate companies who buy and sell skyscrapers and develop malls. It's not like... Um, these Agent are, Pro. These it's are, like a little skip along the our list source. These three, it's not like these three data mm -hmm. sources are for us investors to try to make some money. These are the three data sources in this industry, in this country, and that's it. Right. Everything else is below it. There's not some secret data set that, um, I don't know, the large commercial uh, companies like Sam Zell, like huge investment companies or real estate investment trusts, there's not some secret tool that they use. In fact, when we talk to them, they don't even know about these. I was going to say, I was going to say, so these are, are those who this is do, it. they don't know how to use it as well as we do. This is the F1 race car. It's yeah. the tip top, fastest, best data sets in the country. Right. And it's not, I want to express Available too, to this is not a list. This is you getting in. It's like you're sitting down and having, you sit down at the computer and you have the country assessors database at your fingertips. What would you like to display? And that's data tree. And well, all three of those. Data tree is one of them that we're talking about this question. So that's the third. We use RealQuest Pro, Title Pro, and we use Data Tree, which is uh, First American Titles Company. And they bring in some other uh, unique features and characteristics that we use for houses. So Joe's asking, all right, I want to make sure that I'm really pulling the right thing. I don't want to accidentally pull in vacant land. I really want to pull in an SFR. To you, please. On Friday, the show will be you know, that we will re uh, record and air is called, I don't want to learn something new. <laughs> so thank you, Joe, because you obviously want to learn something new. That's good. And you have a very valid question about it. So I'm going to answer it. If I sat down in an F1 race car right now, and attach the little steering wheel, I wouldn't know how to start the damn thing, <laughs> let alone drive it or anything else. Probably kill myself. It's funny how many people don't know that the steering wheel comes <laughs> off and on to get in and out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, know. I just assumed everyone I, knows. I know. Anyway. I happen to know that. <laughs> Trust me, it's painful living in this household. I got to know this stuff. <laughs> oh, really? You want to get into this? Who has a faster car? You me. Okay, anyway. <laughs> She has a speed freak. And my, steer my steering wheel stays attached. <laughs> <laughs> it's got that shape, though. It does. I love my it's steering wheel. It's got that wheel. shape of that F1 that. race car. I love it. <laughs> Mine doesn't. Anyway. <laughs> I would enjoy. I would, nothing would make me happier to, to take a class for all afternoon to get into an F1 race car, any car for that matter, and learn how to do n new stuff, how to drive it. And so the first time I yeah. sat, uh, sat down and got in front of DataTree, 
I had the biggest, I had a perma smile on my face the whole weekend. <laughs> I remember the weekend when yeah. we, get, somebody contacted us and said, you guys provide data. Maybe you can provide our product too. Here's a, have the run of the place. Let us know on Monday. Mm-hmm. And I, it was a lost weekend for me. Yeah. I, I don't think I took a shower. Yeah, I remember. That, that's how happy. And by the time I was done, I was driving around the track pretty effectively. Mm-hmm. Could I win a race? No, but you know, I, I knew how to start the thing. That's what's going on with Joe. He just got into data tree. He's probably, obviously by asking this question, he's got a bunch of experience, whether it's through RealQuest or Title Pro or some of their other smaller, uh, silly little products, not the pro versions, which is what these are. And he's asking, how do I get, I'm looking at a data set of, let's say, XYZ County, and I can see, just because I typed in state county, that there's 4,382 properties, or I like to call it APNs, in that county. So what are those properties? Some of them are houses, some of them are land, some of them are apartment buildings, and on, some of them are cemeteries and hospitals. We don't care about that stuff. We care about land, even though this is the House Academy show. We care about houses, not land. There's another example of no editing. There we go. <laughs> we only want the houses. So you go down and look at land use, and now you're getting familiar with data tree, and you're learning something new because your mind is open. And you find houses only. I only wanted to see houses. So that 6,000 number I just gave is now 4,000. But the 2,000 other properties are all other property types except houses. So he wants to now just look at houses that are vacant, just land. So the assessor applies, and this is universally all through the country, two types of assessment, a land value and an improvement value. Improvements mean all the stuff that's built up on the land. Mm -hmm. So if I put in an improvement value zero, then I have land. Mm -hmm. Joe's like, I did that and it's not coming back. Here's why. All the data sets in all the different uh, counties are different. Although it's it's packaged up real pretty on DataTree and all the other sources, their data sets, the back end of them are fed directly from the the county assessors. So he's probably in a county that is not looking at data the way that we do. So there's a big difference between null, a value of null, and a value of zero. Joe's fix here is to do null and not zero. Because the assessor didn't put in zero, they just said, eh, it's not, I don't know. It's, there's no value, no proven value. So I'm not going to put in zero. I'm just going to leave it blank. That's probably what's going on. If it's a very, very rural, here, here's my point. There's a few ways to look at this. When you sit down in an F1 race car, you're going to push some buttons and see what happens and ask some questions. And you're going to give yourself a couple hours, hopefully, to look around and see how different it is from your own car and that whole experience. He wants to learn something new. Well, that's great, Steve. (laughs) (laughs) This is, I have a big issues with that, with the closed mindedness lately. (laughs) Oh, please, please. (laughs) We didn't know that. <laughs> I think this is great. All right. I think that answered the question. I hope that answered the question. So I, um, and what's great about this too, since we're talking about data and data tree, it's just, man, when you get in there, I love when I talk to people that have messed around with county data. Me too. And done it themselves. And they got the spreadsheet back or a CD or an email or something. And they're like, what the heck? And when they sit down and have a tool like data tree where they're like, you mean... I just check this box and that does this and I can select this. You mean I can select no mortgage or a mortgage up to a certain percentage? Or foreclosure property or uh, just, I mean, uh, it's Or you limitless. mean I could do three bedroom, two bath, no pool? What the heck? Because yeah, that's, I don't want to deal with this stuff. Yes, you can do all of that. It's <laughs> like, it is like Christmas for those of us in this yeah. industry and you need data, you need to find it's, out what's like going cheating. on. It's awesome. Let me say one more thing about data before we moved on to the topic. You have to get this data somewhere to succeed at this business. You know, there's there's a lot of ways you can cut corners. If you're if you're you know if you're the kind of person who's your house is paid for uh, and the kids are gone and you know you're you've got your you're a freak like me and you're you've got your monthly personal monthly budget down to like eight hundred and eighty two dollars and thirty four cents, most of which is insurance. If you're and you don't want to pay for data, you're going to fail at this. You can skimp on everything else. You can use a five-year-old computer. You can go live in the woods and use solar panels. But you, <laughs> <laughs> but you need a data set. 
you need a data set. And if you, this is not a commercial, but if you went and got these three data sets on your own, walked in off the street and said, hey, real quest, I need this data set. Hey, Title Pro, I need this. Hey, Data Tree, I need this. It would cost you thousands of dollars a month. Thousands. Uh, in, in Data Tree's case, it would be closer to 5,000 a month. So why is it, we, we provide all this stuff for 250 or $300 a month because we've negotiated fantastic deals with them. And because we said, you know what? Okay, it costs 5,000 bucks a month, great. Here's your 5,000 bucks a month, I'll, I'll sign up for as long as you need me to sign up because I know there's gonna be a bunch of people in my group that are gonna pay me 250. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, I just, I'm saying this in response to people who are like, why is this so expensive? It's, it's not. not, it's so cheap. That's One the of them question. is 250. Should be, why is this so cheap? Exactly, that's true, that's a good point. <laughs> 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 okay, moving on. <laughs> Today's topic, minimum profit per deal to make it worth the effort. This is the meat of the show. I bought a property or I'm thinking about buying a property. I'd sent the mail out. Everything's great. I got a bunch of responses. I'm looking at four of them. On the first one, I can make 40 grand. On the first one, I can make 20. On the first one, I think I can make 100, but there's going to be some stuff. And on the last one, I have to do nothing at all except repost this on the MLS and make 15,000. Which one do you choose? Correct. Well, well, I was thinking back even before that. I wouldn't, you, we we start with even the offers that we send out. Before we even get to that point, you're looking at the, uh, you send the offers based on that. Based on how much money you want to make. Exactly. So we it asset. really actually happens before we're staring at them. Right. So we know when the phone calls come in, if they accept our offer, there's a pretty good chance. We know how much make. Pretty good chance we're going to do it because we wouldn't have sent the offer out if we didn't feel that yeah. way. And it already meets our minimum threshold. And we already know because we did all the research that the days on market in the area are, you know, 28, which is a fantastic number. And that a very small percentage of the properties in the whole market are for sale. So that's and why we sent in the first is declining. Place. We know all that stuff's already happening. Right. So. But anyway, forget about the stats. You're looking at five deals. Which one? I mean, what's your threshold? What was my number? Oh, well, just I didn't I don't remember what your numbers were, but I know what my number is. It's like at least I'm around, you know what? Because I'm around 40,000 at the get go, because I know by the time it's all done and I got escrow fees, you know, on the buy side and the sell side. It's and 30. if they bring an agent involved, you know, on the buy side, I'm never going to have an agent on my end, obviously. But say my buyer has an agent, I gotta back that out. So that's where I'm really closer to 40, 35 to 40, I've gotta make, I've gotta have baked in for me to pull the trigger and do the deal. Anything less than that for $10,000, there's, there's too many other things I could go do and make $10,000 yeah, tomorrow. It. I could buy one piece of dirt and make $10,000 yeah. tomorrow. You have to place a, this is, I don't wanna get all complicated or brainy on this, but you do have to place a value on how much time you're going to spend to do a deal. And if it's, if you divide that, how much money you're going to make by the number of man hours that you're paying for, or either doing yourself, there's a, there's a point where it becomes ineffective to do a, do a deal, even though you're making dollar, making money. The other, you know, this, the strange thing I do is I always have to put stuff into systems. I can't just look at it one off. So whatever the number is, I have to, I multiply by 10 in my head because mm -hmm. it's, 10 months, you mm -hmm. do 10 deals a year or 50 and 50. I multiply by 50, like one a week because mm -hmm. it's a system. And so at 50,000, I'm making half a million dollars a year at one a month. And then it's fantastic numbers at you know, 2.5 million. Do you know what I do? <laughs> one of the things I do is I back out my hour. I figure out what's my hourly rate. <laughs> I'm yeah. not kidding. What is your hourly rate? It's, it's, it's um, lot. it's pretty good. Actually. It's not nothing to sneeze at, but that's the thing. If I back out and I'm like, I find out my hourly rate is not what I think my hourly rate should be. I'm not gonna do that too. So it's, it's my way of thinking of, I'm not going to put 10 hours of my time into this for $10,000. Nope. In your first year in this business, nobody knows what's going to happen. Hopefully you make, make some money, 60 to hundred, maybe $150,000 ish on the side. In the second year in this business, you should be making three to five hundred thousand dollars, and in the third year, you should be clearing a million bucks a year. And it's not just running around crazy, you know, uh, Wall Street uh, day trader nutcase. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about picking your kids up from school and calmly managing a num the number of, of deals that you're comfortable with 
It's great. If that number is 10, you want to do one deal a month and you want to take your time and you need to make a hundred grand then. It's very realistic. Mm -hmm. If the number is 300,000, then you can get away with, and you want to do 10, uh, one a month, then you can get away with 30,000 a month. Man, you $30,000 a month buying and selling houses. On the side. Is just ridiculously easy and very, very realistic for anybody who understands real estate a little bit, who's got the right attitude and gets data. Yeah. And this is, by the way, just buying the asset and selling the asset. You're not, you're not renovating. You're not yeah. sweeping. You're just not moving stuff doing around. anything. This is not a sales yeah. pitch. This is really how we look at this stuff. It is. And it's the reason that we ended up on the beach here in California. Really, I'm not exaggerating. Well, that's not it's just not us. It's not because we're excessively intelligent. We have our community doing it. Stuff. Yeah. It's not just us. We it's have people are doing it. It's simple math. Better than us. Again, doing better and more deals than us. And we have an and attitude. Great. And we'll talk about it on Friday. We're willing to learn new stuff. Yeah. We, we have an attitude, Jill, specifically. You know, I didn't. I always was like this, but never. Like, when I met Jill, I was like, I had never seen anything like this. Uh-oh. <laughs> she just won't quit. She just refuses to be, like, defeated. You know? Thank and you. she's not. She doesn't do it, like, uh, with a knife in her hand. Thanks. angry she does it like you know oh, that didn't work this week let's do it next week it'll be different we'll change it she doesn't ever look back and so i think that really 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 is thank required you. in this business and everything well that's very sweet of you thank you very much it's the truth well you have it too by the way i know you have a man this is going to be compliment each other excuse us for a moment while we have a little moment together <laughs> this is when the kids leave the kitchen exactly oh my god we're doing it so, again yeah here we go <laughs> it's great i threw up in my mouth <laughs> <laughs> don't kiss. <laughs> uh, well, I am also lucky that I got with the the brilliant mind that I did, who taught oh, geez, me Jill. the ins and outs of this and and led the way. And you don't stop too, for the Thank record. You. I appreciate it. Well, you know, a lot of people don't realize in real estate there's a huge data component to this. There's a huge data component to everything. You know, you just, and it's not that hard to find it. There's a customer database for everything. There's a finite way to reach people for everything. I don't care how, what business you're in. You need to know who your customer base is and you need to be reaching them. They need to be aware of what, that you're there and uh, what you're offering. How, how, how simple is that? I agree. There's data sets for all this stuff. Hey, look, in 1970, there wasn't, we're lucky as hell to be living in this, in this day and age where we can all right, great. I accept the fact that there's a data set. Now, where is it? Oh, well, you're, you know, you're watching it for real estate. We cover it all. All right. You know, we'll I was save like, it for Friday. Well, I was going to make one more comment on this to bring this home to you said, how lucky are we in this day and age? The other thing that's so great about us with the house Academy and everything that we're all doing right now, our efforts, more and more people are getting disgruntled with uh, agents and the old way of doing business. They're happily responding to our offers and seeking us out. How great is that? <laughs> what? what I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm half as enthusiastic about it as you are. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> On that note, happy you could join us today. Every Tuesday and Thursday, where you can find us right here on the House Academy Show, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, you can see us over on the Land Academy Show. Tomorrow, the episode on the Land Academy Show is called How to Find a Good County to Send Blind Offers to Owners, Landowners. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. These are long shows. We have a lot to say today. I guess. Or maybe it's just horsing around. Maybe. I think a lot of it's that. We brought up the whole, we don't edit anything, and now we're just like, mm. Whatever. I was talking to somebody one time and they said, you know, I have to read the transcript uh, on your show because it just takes too long to listen to it. And then somebody <laughs> else heard what we were saying. This is at the live event. And they turned around and said, I listened to it at uh, twice what the speed. speed. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a lot. <laughs> I wonder what I sound like sped up. I've never done that. That's really, really good. The House Academy show remains commercial free for you, our loyal listener. So wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening, please subscribe and rate us there. We are Stephen Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property.